Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Sharpen AI by Topaz Labs. Now, this product has been getting a lot of press. And those of you that have been following me for a while, watching my videos, know that generally speaking, I'm positive. I tend to be very positive in my videos and I talk about the good things about a product and I mention the bad things, but I don't dwell on it necessarily. But as far as Sharpen AI, I wish I could tell you it's a great product because I'm an affiliate for Topaz Labs. And then I tell you it's a great product. And I'd say, look in the description below the video, there'll be a link, a discount code. You could save money when you purchase it. And I'd make a commission when you do. But for the life of me, I cannot get Sharpen AI to work adequately. I just can't get it to work like I think it should work. Let's put it that way. Now, if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. But I'm going to go through it. I'm going to show you how it works. And I'm going to hopefully, I think it'll be self-explanatory while I don't, while, why I don't think it's really that great. All right. I have Sharpen AI here. On my desktop, I have two images. Uh, now, Sharpen AI claims that it will, it could fix camera blur, like motion blur. It could fix focus blur, like you didn't nail focus, and it will just sharpen an image. So I have this image here of the eagle. It's actually a perfectly focused image. There was no motion blur either, but maybe we'd like to sharpen it with Sharpen AI. Then I have uh, this image of the macaque, and if I zoom in on the macaque, um, you can see it's, it's really blurry. It wasn't very sharp. I was shooting through glass and I just didn't nail focus. So we're going to take a look at this image as well. Now, Topaz AI is a bulk editor. You could move more than one image into it and process them all at the same time. We're going to move both of these images into it, but we're not going to actually process them at the same time. We're going to process them individually. Now you can see it's showing the eagle image and down here at the bottom, um, it will show how many images you brought into it. Right now it's showing the two images and the top image is the eagle image and there's the uh, macaque. Now you'll notice too that they're TIFF images. Uh, Sharpen AI is a raw, it will work with raw files, but it's what I found and one of my complaints about it is it's very slow. Uh, so with raw files, it's even extra slow. So what I did is I took these raw files and I just exported them as TIFF files. And actually, they're a little smaller. They're like uh, the long edge is 2,048 pixels long. That's the way I exported them. So it's just a little faster in Sharpen AI because they're TIFF files and because they're not full resolution files. Obviously... If you're going to use Topaz AI and you shoot raw, you want to send over the raw or import the raw file, or at the very least, if you're using it as a plugin, send in a full resolution TIFF file. Uh, but on my computer, it's very slow. Now, my iMac is relatively old, but I have used this on my MacBook Pro, which is uh, less than actually six months old. And when I purchased it, it's the top of the line, fastest microprocessor, fastest graphics processor. And I got like 32 gigabytes of RAM in that. Now, even with that, it's slow, although it is way faster than my iMac, but it is slow. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So let's, um, let's take a look at this uh, macaque first. I'm going to zoom in to 200%. Now, part of the reason why it could be frustrating slow is because every time you zoom in or you just move the image around, if you have auto update preview enabled, it's going to update the preview and that's what is slow. It just takes some time to re uh, like uh, update or just to update this preview and that Every time, again, every time you move it, every time you zoom in or out, um, anytime you select a different model. And now we're going to talk about these. We have three different models, sharpen, stabilize, and focus. Sharpen, obviously, is for an image you need sharpen. Stabilize is when you have some motion blur in there. Focus is when you don't nail focus. Now, 
you really only could pick one of these. You can't run all three of them on a single image. You could if you save the image in between. So if you have an image that has motion uh, blur, focus blur, and it needs to be sharpened, you would do one of them, save it, then put it back into Topaz AI, do a second one, and so on. So you could do it, but it takes a lot of time. Now this image I mentioned, I didn't nail focus. So we'll go and click on focus. And then do we want a manual uh, mode? And you can see there's uh, sliders there to, for sharpness, suppress noise, and to add grain. Sometimes if you add grain to an image, it gives the effect that it looks sharper. So that's why sometimes it's a little trick you could use is to add grain to make it look sharper. Um, so in this instance, let's try auto. All right, so we'll just go to auto. And auto, it's going to examine the image and come up with its own uh, settings to, in this case, uh, take care of focus. And we're going to click update. Now, this is what I'm talking about, generating the preview. You see it's at 0% still. And this will chug along, 17. And every time, if you have auto update preview checked, every time you move the drag the image around, zoom in, zoom out, it's going to do this generating preview every single time. And that could be relatively slow. All right, now, hopefully you see this in the video. Uh, this is with the auto settings for focus. Uh, it's horrible, it's just not acceptable. Now, if I zoom out to 100%, it, we lost it, so I have to update the preview again. So I have to click update again, and it's going to do that now. So again, I have auto update preview off, so I had to click that little button, and you see it's doing this whole thing again. And again, now granted, this is a slower, not that it's slower, it's an older iMac. At the time when I purchased it, it was, you know, the, all the bells and whistles, but right now it's not the fastest computer you could own. So if you own an older PC or an older Apple computer, uh, you're going to be um, very frustrated with this generating preview, generating preview issue that comes up every time. Now on my MacBook, uh, this would probably take about, I would estimate one quarter of the time. So it is considerably faster, but you can see it's only at 60% now. The more pixels that are in the image, the longer the preview takes. Meaning if I'm zoomed way in, there's not as many pixels, so it doesn't take that long for the preview to render. But if I'm zoomed way out and we have a lot of pixels, it takes a lot longer for the preview to render and it just drives you insane. So here we go. So it's still going, still going, still going. And you can see it's just driving us crazy. Okay, there. Now you can see even here, that isn't acceptable at auto. Now that's auto. So I could come in and manually and try to redo these things. So you'd be playing around with this quite a while. Let's zoom back in. Now you see we lost it again. We have to update again <laughs> if I want to, but I'm not going to. We're going to go to manual. And let's just take, there's really, I don't think any noise in the image that is getting exacerbated by the sharpening. Um, so let's take suppressed noise all the way down. And let's just take sharpness uh, down quite a bit. Let's go to like uh, 20, all right? So we're at like 50. And so we'll try it there and I'm going to click update again, all right? So we'll try this. Now, because I'm zoomed in, the generating preview won't take quite as long because it's not displaying as many pixels. Now, when you're done, if you are satisfied with any of the sharpening you do and you save it, then that renders again, and that's rendering the whole image, and that takes some time. So here we are. Uh, we are trying to fix focus. I have sharpness at 20. I have noise and grain at zero, and to me, that still isn't acceptable. You could just see how it just doesn't look right, all right? So, you know, it is what it is. Again, if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But um, again, we'll go to the uh, bald eagle, all right? Let's uh, move the bald eagle down. Now this one I mentioned, it's, um, I focused properly on this one, I nailed focus. I just want to do some sharpening to it. So um, I'm going to use the sharpen model and we'll do auto on this, all right? And then I'm going to click update. Um, should I zoom out a little more before I do that? Um, let's, no, let's stay at, 
should stay at 200. All right, and we'll click update. All right, so now it's using the sharpening model. It's just going to do some sharpening to this image. And it's going pretty quick on this. And uh, this one looks pretty good. Here's the original. I could click on this little button up here. There's before. There's after. Before. After. All right. But you know what? I could do that in Lightroom on one Luminar. I could do it in all those as well. So it's not anything super special in my opinion. We go click on the view. We could go to a split view and then I could grab this little bar. Oops, don't want to grab the image. I want to grab the little bar. See, now I grabbed the image accidentally. You see, we lost our sharpening. I have to hit update again. So we're not going to, I'm not going to do that to you. All right. But what we are going to do, oh, it's generating the preview anyway. All right. So we'll go to split view again and we'll grab this little thing more carefully. There we go. There's before and after. I mean, it did a good job, but I'm just, I don't think it did any better than any other sharpening application that comes with your raw editor that you use, whether you use Lightroom uh, on one or anything else. Go back to 100%. Get rid of this uh, split screen view. It's generating the preview again. Now it does have masking. Um, the masking was quite frustrating for me as well. Um, and let me try to demo that. And I'm, I'm, I apologize because I'm not a negative person. I'm not one that like, you know, when I see a video I don't like and hits the thumbs down or anything like that, I never do that. I just move on. So I'm not a negative person and it really is out of character for me to be whining about this software, but I really don't think it's that great. And I don't want to endorse it and have you use my discount code and buy it and I walk away with the commission and you walk away unhappy. That's just not how I'm going to roll with this. So anyway, it has masking. In many cases, you just want your subject sharp. So let's say I just want the eagle sharp. So I could click on this little masking icon up here, and we go into mask mode. Now, uh, we have mask options, and you can see right here we have a white mask. So the entire image would be sharpened. Now, because we're in masking mode again, we lost the sharpening that was there. So I would have to click update uh, to get the sharpening back so I could see it. So we could understand what it's doing. So I'll do that. And again, this is where I said it's kind of like uh, maddingly, madding, maddingly, maddingly. It's just slow. Let's put it that way. Sometimes I can't say words, especially early in the morning. So anyway, we're going to let this do this. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about with masking. All right. So we got our sharp image back. Now, Two ways you could go about it. You could mask away the sharpness from the background, the eagle's shoulders. Maybe you don't want it on the shoulders. You just want it on the eagle's head and beak. Um, or you could just mask it in everywhere else. And you also have an overlay. You can see there's little check marks for an overlay. So uh, we would hide. Click on hide, right? So we're going to take away the sharpening everywhere else. And it also has edge aware. So we could not accidentally uh, paint on the eagle if we don't. So we also have the radius of the brush, the threshold, which is more or less the um, softness, softness of the brush, and the opacity of the brush. Uh, maybe you don't want to remove all the sharpening from an area, just a little bit of it, and then you would change the opacity. In this case, we'll keep opacity at 100, and I'll paint up here. And you can see how we're getting now this kind of odd, weird-looking overlay type thing. And if we let go, it's still staying red. Like, why is it doing that? So we turn overlay off, and then we lost our sharpening. Uh, then we could come in. All right, we're removing it from here, right? And if you look at the mask, you can see it's showing the black. We're remove, removing it. But actually, in my opinion, the better way to do this is to have the just paint on the eagle's head. That's where you want the sharpening to be. So what you would do is first we'll go down here and we're going to clear this mess. So we're basically resetting it and we want it black. That way we're going to show the um, sharpening. We want the sharpening to come through on the eagle's head. So I'll turn overlay back on and we could paint on the eagle's head. Now it seems to be working more like you would think it should work, right? And I'll reduce my brush a little bit. And now I'm just on the eagle's head. Now we have that edge aware on and it seems to be working okay 
Sometimes I found it failing on me. So the main thing here, it failed a little bit there, but that's because I let that center black circle uh, go outside the white point. And that's what you don't want to do. You want to make sure that the threshold area or that softened or feathered area um, only goes outside and not that black circle. And then you'll be okay with the edge detect. All right, so we're just doing this real quick. All right, I'm not going to do that great of a job, obviously, because yeah, I'm going to mess up a lot there, but who cares? All right, so we'll get down in here. All right, we're just doing the eagle's head for the sake of this demo, right? All right. All right, so we have a really lousy job. Now, if we wanted to remove this part where I marked this spot where I messed up, click on hide, and then we could come in here and paint that away. See, I was painting it away. Okay. All right. So we have that mask. I'll turn the overlay off. The mask is there. I'm going to hit update. And it should theoretically just have a sharp eagle head now. So we're going to apply the mask right here. So we're going to get out of mask mode. I have to hit update again. And it updated right away because it kind of had that in memory, which is good. So there's the original. Watch the eagle's head. There's the original. There's before or after, basically. So it worked. I mean, it worked, but masking is a little quirky, too. Um, and that's really all I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show I've tried um, to stabilize images that had a little motion blur in them, and it failed as, as much as it did with the macaque, trying to fix focus. I just couldn't get it to work. So if anyone has had better luck using Sharpen AI, in the comments below, please mention what you do to make it work for you. It does sharpen an image okay, um, but it doesn't seem to do stabilization or focus as well as one might hope. So, um, again, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, disappointed, I, I'd say. I would love nothing more to come on here and tell you how great it is, show you how great it is, tell you you use my... my my link and my discount code and make commissions on your purchases, but it just doesn't cut it for me. All right. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>